reporting any issues you have. He's the head of reconciliation and integration. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum again. Thank you. Uh, as you've heard, my name is uh, Liban Guyo. I work for the National Cohesion and uh, Integration Commission. Uh, on behalf of the commission, I would like to say that uh, as a commission, we've really been pleased uh, to be part of this uh, a high, very well organized and high level conference. I haven't seen this conference actually advertised on mainstream media, but I know we've done a lot of advertisement through our own network through the mosque. So, uh, Mashallah, the Muslim had really turned up in large numbers, and I want to congratulate the organizers for this. Uh, just allow me to give you a little bit of background on the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. NCIC is a permanent commission that was formed after the post-election violence of 2007-2008. It's one of the permanent uh, commission called Agenda 4 Commission. And uh, the main mandate of the commission is to facilitate and promote equality of opportunity, harmonious living of all Kenyans. I think one of the mandates which is very relevant for this particular conference is the fact that it is the duty of NCIC as an institution to ensure that no Kenyan is discriminated on the basis of his ethnicity, that is tribe, sometimes you call them tribe, on the basis of his religion, and the basis of his race. We need to acknowledge that Kenya is multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, and multiracial country. We have Kenyans, Africans, Caucasians, and Kenyans of Asian background. So I think it is therefore uh, uh, important to have an institution of, uh, of this uh, kind. Um, in the recent past, uh, we had uh, witnessed ethnic conflict. We've had violent conflict in this country, but it has always been along the ethnic lines. We are very lucky not to have uh, had violent conflict along religious lines. We've never had a sectarian violence in this country. And I think we are also very lucky as a country that we have one institution which the commission had uh, signed an MOU with and we've partnered with them, which is called the Interreligious Council of Kenya. And IRCK brings together uh, the Christians, the Hindus, the Muslims, the African traditional heritage and all that. So many a times, uh, if we are in the recent past, we've been witnessing the uh, I already don't want to call it terrorism, but acts of criminality. Because there's a lot of things which is happening in this country, and people say it's uh, terrorism and all that. And you know, terrorism knows no, uh, no tribe, no race. It doesn't know any of that. Our religious leaders had always come together under the auspice of IRCK, condemning the attack, calling Kenyans to coexist uh, peacefully, and we never had a problem. But increasingly, Increasingly, a lot of things are happening. Religious leaders are being targeted from both the mainstream religion in this country, that is Islam uh, and, and, and the Christians. And therefore, there has been an upsurge of uh, hate speech. We've seen intolerance in this country. We've seen xenophobic tendencies. If someone sees you, you are dressed you know, in your religious regalia, and, uh, and uh, you, you are entering a public service vehicle. Uh, I had personally witnessed uh, that some you know, passengers decided even to get off, their, uh, get off the, the, the Matatu. I mean, as a commission, we are really concerned with these xenophobic uh, tendencies. Um, currently, there has been a, a security operations that has been going on. And that's the concern that uh, those operations have been uh, targeting certain segments of our society. And if that is really true, then that is really something which is very unfortunate. And because of that, we've seen hate messages, hate speech 
on social media on social media and even on the mainstream newspapers through open pieces through opinion pieces so therefore we really want to urge as a commission we want to urge all kenyans to really be tolerant uh, and not to be swayed by pronouncements of certain leaders. I really don't want to call it political leaders because they are leaders at all levels. You know, there are several categories of leaders. And I would like finally to say that most of these negative stereotypes and prejudices are actually influenced by ignorance. I'm very ignorant of you as a person, of your culture, of your religion. And therefore, it is very important to have a conference of this kind. And, and I know this is a first Islamic annual conference, but we'll really be going into the future, want to witness a conference of this magnitude that bring together all religious uh, leaders, religious groups in this country. And I would like to urge my fellow brothers here, if you have been discriminated on those basis, on those three categories I had mentioned earlier, we have a complaint desk, we have a department in the commission that is responsible for the receiving complaints, enforcement of the complaints, and investigation. And we have a toll-free number, which is 15366, which you can forward your complaints to you can actually come forward because most of the time we just like complaining and winning. It shouldn't be the case. It's always, you, you can complain. You know, there's a freedom of speech. If you, your right had been infringed, you have every right. If you have every right, kujitete uh, hakiako, because freedom of expression and association is enshrined in Article 33 of the Kenyan Constitution. But also, we must be aware of the fact that Freedom also comes with responsibilities. As we go about, you know, exercising our rights, let's also know that it's not just my rights and my entitlements, but it's also my responsibility. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Uh, the number again is 15666. 15666. Um, some reports. Amina Adan, your report form, you lost it. Please make arrangements to pick it up. <laughs> Wasim Kemsen, who was here earlier before and spoke regarding the virtues of loving the Prophet. He will speak regarding the emotions of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fadil. Uh, quick one, Mahida, your army is waiting for you at the gate. Mahida. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all, mashaAllah. Many of you came here early this morning and, and remained, mashaAllah. The sister's section, mashaAllah, is a little emptier than it was, but still, mashaAllah, is, is practically full. And it seems that the customs that I left back in the UK, where sisters outnumber the brothers, is here as well. <laughs> And it's a good thing, alhamdulillah. The future for the ummah is good, inshallah. The fact that the sisters, who are the very foundation of any Islamic society, that, that they're engaging themselves in knowledge, attending conferences. And I was just, uh, a brother mentioned earlier that the talk that the sheikh gave in Arabic, when he was mentioning some jokes, that the, before the translation, the sisters were laughing before the brothers. That means that they understand Arabic better than the brothers, mashallah. <laughs> yeah. So as you've been, you've been listening to many things about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
his actions, his sacrifices, and his struggles. But on a more, more sensitive note, I would like just to mention a few things about or get an insight to the actual emotions, the actual feelings, the inner feelings of the Prophet ﷺ. That he was a human being, just like you and I. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies this in the Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ Say, إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشُرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ That I am a human being like you. يُوحَى إِلَيْ Except that he, rece he receives revelation. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So he had human feelings, human needs, and human emotions. And it is, if you like sensitive people, or those people who have soft hearts, who are able to engage and understand the feelings of other people. Those people who are harsh, those people who are very quick to make decisions on issues, very often are oblivious to the feelings of other people. Hence them being very quick in their judgment and maybe being hard-hearted. But you should remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has told us, in, in the Quran. Alam ya'nini al-lazina alam ya'nili al-lazina amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikri Allah. Wa ma nazala min al-haqqi wa la yakunu kan lazina utu al-kitaba min qabl. Fatala alayhimu al-amad. Faqasat qulubuhum wa kathirum minhum fasiqun. Has the time not come that those who have believed that their hearts should become humble, should become soft to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We shouldn't be hard-hearted people. We should be soft people. But standing up for justice and fairness, of course. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse reminds us, the believers, to have soft hearts. Now, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would have many emotions. At times he would be fearful. At times he would be hopeful. At times he would even shed tears. When he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he cried, whenever he feared Allah, he put his full trust in Allah, all of these emotions were of perfect sincerity. Purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the show, of any human being. Because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam feared Allah more than anyone. Because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had more hope in Allah than anyone. He had more awe in Allah than anyone. So I just want to mention a few examples that we can try to engage in, to think over, to ponder over, which is something that I just I mentioned in my previous lecture, and that is that whenever you hear this information, don't allow it just to be information that comes in one ear and then it leaves five minutes later. That some of this information that you want to remain with you, that it impacts your heart, that information that you hear, it remains with you, and that it makes positive changes within you. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha stated that when he ever, whenever he would recite Quran, that he would cry. Abu Bakr. In salah and out of salah. Now imagine what it would be like for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa upon receiving the kalam of Allah. No one ever heard it before. Direct to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. It came to a stage where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be hasty in wanting to recite that what was being revealed to him. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told or revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به. 
Do not move your tongue concerning the Quran to make haste. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to receive the Quran quickly to listen and hear the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One night, Umm al Mu'minina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was praying the night prayer. And while he was standing, he began to cry while reciting the Quran. Standing until his beard became wet with tears. And then when he went down into sujood, into, prostra into prostration, a long prostration when he got up, that she, no she no noted even the floor was wet from the tears of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then when he finished the salah that he laid on his side and continued to cry. More than usual. She noticed this. Until the time for Salatul Fajr that it came. When Bilal radiallahu an, he came to make the adhan. Bilal radiallahu an, he saw the Prophet والسلام, in this state. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, what has made you cry so intensely like this? Where Allah Jalla wa has forgiven everything in the past and in the future. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to Bilal radiallahu an, Ya Bilal, how is it that I can stop crying when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to me last night? And this ayah, brothers and sisters, I just want you to ponder over this ayah. Like you should ponder over all of the ayat of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is verse in Surah Ali Imran, from verse 190 onwards, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ardi wa akhtilafi al-layli wa nahar la ayatil li uli al-albab. الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار The meaning of this verse is that indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day that these are signs for people of understanding. Those who remember Allah while standing and while sitting and while on their sides. Remember the state of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while standing and while sitting and while lying down. And that they say, Rabbana, O oh Lord, that you did not create this creation with no reason. Ba'atila. Glory be to you, exalted, you are far above such a thing. Then protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. You know myself, personally, I love to watch nature programs. Especially those safari nature programs which you have on your doorstep. And I can't believe I'm here, and it's just, you know, a short way away. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the khalq, the creation. Now the narrators of these particular programs, there are a few famous people. Like David Attenborough, very famous biologist, scientist, in looking at these programs. Some of these programs, you see them, it's amazing, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything in a perfect fashion. He is there seeing it with his own eyes. I'm seeing it through a television screen, which was through a camera. He's seeing it with his own eyes. But you know that person, la yu'minu billah. He doesn't believe in Allah. He doesn't believe that there is a creator who created the most amazing creation that he is seeing. But the one who ponders really over this creation and believes and knows for certain it is only from Allah, 
these are true men and true women of understanding. That they say, Subhanak, glory be to Allah. You didn't create this for no reason, for nothing. When the, pre the Prophet ﷺ heard these ayat, he could do nothing except shed tears upon hearing these verses. The Prophet ﷺ himself, upon receiving the revelation so often, would also like for it to be recited so he himself could hear it. He would recite it and he would like for it to be heard, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would choose companions on different occasions for them to recite the Qur'an to him, alayhi salatu salam, so he could hear it. On one occasion, he asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. And he asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, to recite from the beginning of Surah An nisa So he began reciting, he began reciting. And then when Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, when he looked up to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam listening and pondering over these verses, he saw that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was weeping. And he remembered the ayah that he was reciting, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam weeping and crying when I reached the verse, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا but how will it be with them when we bring to every people a witness and we bring you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a witness against all of these? An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon hearing the ayat of Allah jalla wa ala, had an impact upon him like no other person. Because he knew where these ayat, who they were from. For many of us, Maybe when we hear the ayat of Allah, do we ponder and do we know who they came from? They are the who? From who? Allah. The one who created the heavens and the earth. الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him whom belongs the whole dominion, the heavens and the earth, that everything in the universe which submits to him whether they like it or that they don't. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew these realities. So these are just a couple of examples upon the Prophet alayhi wa sallam shedding tears out of the ayat and the verses of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a family. He married Khadija. Radiyallahu ta'ala anha When he was 25 years old Before prophethood, before messengership 15 years They lived as husband and wife And then at the age of 40 That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Was chosen by Allah jalla wa ala To then receive the messenger The message He went to Khadija radiyallahu anha Immediately and she consoled him. And she supported him for years. Another 10 years during the persecution and the torment that the Prophet ﷺ went through in Mecca. She was there to support him. And she passed away. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. Years later, years later, in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ going about his business in his home that he came across a necklace. And that this necklace, it, be, it belonged to his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha. And he reminded him of the support that she gave to him. And he shed a tear for that. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she became a little, little bit jealous. That you are crying still up until now over that the woman who was old, And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reminded her that you know she believed in me and supported me when everybody turned away from me. When I had nobody amongst the creation, I had Khadija. This is the human side of an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
even towards the end of his life sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Allah jalla wa ala tested him that his last child born Ibrahim who was about 18 months old what the Prophet alayhi wa sallam what he did is that he allowed his son Ibrahim to be or to grow up on the outskirts of Medina and that he would visit his son quite often to see him growing into a young strong boy now if you see any young child of 18 months old they are so cute mashallah before they reach two and then there's big problems they call them the terrible twos of course they're always beautiful so 18 months the son of the prophet والسلام, Ibrahim ibn Muhammad وسلم, was being brought up on the outskirts of Medina until news reached him news reached him that his son had become seriously ill now bear in mind that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had tasted the very closest of people that had passed away that his own daughters two of his daughters that they had passed away Ruqayya the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Uthman had married two of the daughters of the Prophet ﷺ on different occasions of course Ruqayya and the name escapes me now I never forget these names mother Um Kulthum now they had both passed away previously right towards the, this is the ninth year after Hijrah maybe two years before the Prophet ﷺ passes away two and a half years so he reaches and he finds his son almost lifeless and he holds his son who's taking his last breaths and the inevitable is about to happen so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he holds his son this lifeless body and then he makes the most beautiful of statement because it is a statement that every single one of us that we will take with us in the face of any calamity and only the strong and only the patient will say that that the eyes that it will shed tears and that the heart that it will feel sorrow and it will feel sad we will only say that what is pleasing to our Lord we will not question what has happened whether it is the loss of a relative or a beloved one or the loss of wealth you will never question what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you with and here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a most beautiful statement and that we are with you O Ibrahim and your departing we are indeed very very sad but remember we will never say anything except that it is pleasing to Allah Jalla wa ala. on another occasion one of the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Zainab radiallahu anha that one of her children was seriously seriously sick that she called for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come immediately to do something the message reached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Rasulullah your grandson or granddaughter extremely ill who knows what could happen maybe they could pass away he and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to give the Ummah a dars a lesson he gave a message to tell her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take what he wants and he will give what he wants and everything has a specific time if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was to go there was he going to stop the angel of death coming here the Prophet ﷺ wanted to give us 
a reminder. That even if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to come there, he cannot save the life of anyone. So the message reached. And then it came back again, a second call. Please come, Ya Rasulullah. So the Nabi then, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went to see and he found his grandchild had passed away. Please tell me an individual on this earth whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested like our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give me one person. Ashaddu nasi an al-anbiya. The most severe people who are tested are the, prophet, the prophets and messengers. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was tested like no one else. From those who were closest to him. From the one who protected him for 40 years and more. Abu Talib, he went there and pleaded, Ya Am, O oh uncle, Qul la ilaha illallah, just say la ilaha illallah, I will ask Allah on your, be on your behalf. But he refused. And he died upon disbelief. How that hurt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa held his grandchild Again, he began to weep. He began to cry. The companions, radiallahu anhum, said, Ya Rasulullah, hatta ant, even you. Some of them had not seen the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, cry like this. And Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Mu'adh ibn Jabal was present, he said, Ya Mu'adh, innaha rahma. This is a mercy. Who says that at this time? This is a mercy from Allah. That he allows us to show our emotions. If Allah Jalla wa has decreed this, then we accept it. And this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even his own mother, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. His own mother, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, she passed away when he was six years old just about to really get to know one's mother and then she passed away that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu an that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam visited the grave of his mother and he asked Allah allow me to ask you Rabbi to forgive my mother falam ya'than lah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never gave him permission. And then he asked Allah Jalla wa'ala to allow him to visit the grave. And Allah Jalla wa'ala gave him permission. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was tested beyond anyone's imagination. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test every single one of you biqadr imanihi to the level of your iman. How strong your iman is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you according to that. So if you believe that you're being tested where the matter is far beyond you, this is too much for me to handle. I have nothing to do but just to crumble underneath this calamity or trial. Know that Allah Jalla wa will only test you with a matter that you have the ability by Allah's permission and help and mercy to get through that calamity, to get through that test. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدَ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمٌ There has certainly come to you a messenger from amongst your own selves that it grieves him it is difficult with him that you may suffer from anything and that he is concerned over you and to the believers he is kind and merciful that you never met the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he has it he had a desire alayhi to meet every single one of you 
that before he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as Abu Dhar, he says that there was nothing that was known to be good except that he taught us that there was good in that. And anything that was considered sharr or evil except that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave us advice on that. At times the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would lead the janazah, the funeral prayer over people. On an occasion, after the burial of this particular Sahabi, the Prophet ﷺ took a stick and began just like prodding into the ground. And on this occasion, he began to start weeping and crying. So the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, what is the matter? The Prophet ﷺ, Ya Ikhwani, oh my brothers, for the likes of this, prepare yourselves. The grave, prepare yourselves. Because every soul shall taste death. No one will live forever. Prepare yourselves before the angel of death it comes to you. And the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because Allah Jalla wa'ala showed him the paradise and the hellfire and many things of the unseen. He said to the companions, لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمُوا لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا That if you knew what I knew, you would laugh less frequent and you would cry more often. Out of the fear of Allah, out of, in the hope that Allah will accept your deeds. In another narration, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began reciting some verses. And these verses, considering two great prophets, Khalilullah Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, wa Kalimatullah, Jesus Isa Alaihi Salam. The first verse concerning Ibrahim alayhi salam, what Ibrahim alayhi salam said concerning those people who had worshipped idols. Rabbi inna hunna adhalanna kathiram min nas That these idols have misguided many people. Faman tabi'ani fa innahu minni. For the one who follows me, then he is from me. Waman asani. Whoever goes against me, fa inna ka ghafur rahim then indeed you, Allah, are the all-forgiving, the all-merciful. So the one who turns away from the message that was given to the people to worship Allah, Ibrahim salam said, فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ rahim," That you are the most merciful and the all-forgiving. And Isa alayhi salam, he said, إِن تُعَذِّبُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكْ That if you punish them, then they are your servants and your slaves. وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ And if you forgive them, those who disobeyed you, those who turned away from you, though if you forgive them, فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Then you, you, Allah, are the all-powerful, the all-wise. فَبَكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent Jibreel to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, asking him, why is he weeping? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. That if my nation, if they go astray, if they do something wrong, Ibrahim alayhi salam asked for the forgiveness of people who may have gone astray. Isa alayhi salam mentioned the forgiveness of people who went astray. What about my ummah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Jibreel. He said, Inna sunurdi. Tell him that we will make him a pleased person. Sunurdihi fi ummatihi. We will make him pleased with his ummah. And never will we make you a person who loses any hope or cause you to grieve concerning your ummah. Now there's a few more examples that 
I want to give. And I hope that, at least for myself, upon preparing for this, and maybe some of what I have said, not because I've said it, because what I say, I'm just conveying information that has been compiled. It is not my eloquence, it is not my choice of words. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to hear. But in all of this, all that you have heard now, you are now in the middle of the city center. Imagine that. You have an enormous marquee. We have the opportunity to talk about our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To inform Muslims and non-Muslims alike the reality of this man. I personally believe that if you are a sincere person, you're a good person, your heart is free from corruption, if you come across such an individual, you will find yourself compelled to follow him. You have no choice but to say, this is a man chosen by Allah. This is not a man who came for fame or money or dominion. No. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Give context to the verse. When Allah Jalla wa'ala says that we did not send you, O Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, except as a mercy to mankind. To know him, to understand him, to love him, Allah has had mercy on you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened your heart to be a follower of his. On the day of judgment, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be looking for his ummah. And you, from his ummah, you will be known. You will have distinguishing marks. The marks of wudu. And he will call you to drink from the hawd. And that you will enter together by Allah Jalla wa mercy into the paradise. And that you will live eternal happiness because you loved that man. Because you strived to follow his sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people. Jazakum Allah khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jimmu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You just have to show a bit. Um, we have very, very good news. There's a sister who wants to take a shahada. Can you please move to the, to the nearest mic? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ That there may be those who want to put out the light of Allah. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ Allah jalla wa'ala will ensure that the light of Islam, with or without I, without you, without me, Islam will enter every home. And a moment like this is just another sign. I just want to ask actually, the sister who wants to embrace Islam, was she previously a Christian? 
Yes or no? Do they have a mic? Yes, they do. Yes. <laughs> they have a mic? Yes. Microphone? Yes. Okay. Was he a Christian previously? Yes. Okay. I just want to mention two things very quickly. Number one is that when a person embraces Islam, anything that was done previously which may be deemed as a form of disobedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove that. That you will have a brand new page, like a brand new baby into this earth, completely sinless. This is from the mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Number two, is that a person who was previously a Jew or Christian, from the people of the book, if they embrace Islam, Every deed that they do, فَلَهُ أَوْ لَهَا أَجَرًا They will have double the reward for everything that they do in the future. Double the reward. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> because maybe they spent many of their years of their life, how can I catch up with a person who's been Muslim all of their life? You have a great opportunity. You start sinless and everything that you do, you get two for the price of one. And each of your deeds, are worth at least 10. So it's 20 at least, Allahu Akbar. Now what I'm going to say to you, sister, is I'm going to repeat after me. But what I would like you to do is to repeat after me in English first, because I want you to know what you are about to say. Is that okay? I testify. I testify. That there is, that there is no, one no one worthy of worship, worthy of worship except, Allah. except Allah. And I bear witness, and I bear witness that, Muhammad that Muhammad is the final messenger, is the final messenger of, Allah. of Allah. And I bear witness, and I bear witness that Jesus, that Jesus is the servant is the servant and messenger, and messenger of, Allah. of Allah. I'm going to say this now in Arabic, inshallah, sister. And I would like you to repeat after me. I'll say it very slowly. Ashhadu Ashhadu An la An la Ilaha Ilaha Illa Illa Allah Hala Wa Ashhadu Wa ashedu Anna Hanna Muhammadan Muhammadan Rasulu Rasulu Allah Hala Wa ashedu Wa ashudu Anna Hanna Isa Isa Abdullah Abdullah Wa Rasulu Wa Rasulu Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar I say to you now, sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you steadfast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a light and a beacon of light for other people. I mean, I mean, and all of us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all steadfast upon the deen. And I'm sure that the sisters here will welcome you. You are part of a billion plus family now, mashallah. And I welcome you to the, the religion of Islam. And I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite us all in the paradise. Jazakumullah khairah. Ameen, ameen to ameen. It's a, indeed a blessing that we've had three shahada so far today and many more to come, inshallah. Uh, we have any questions from the brothers or sisters?
Bismillah. <coughs> Someone's mentioned, it's an important point, and that is that um, the sister who just embraced Islam, or any person who embraces Islam for that matter, um, is it a must for them to, to choose a new name? If that person has a name, and it doesn't contain anything which is contrary to Islam or doesn't have an evil or bad meaning it is permissible for them to keep their name absolutely no problem at all if they desire to change their name because you know at times and I know what it feels like you feel like you've shed a skin and that you want to take a, a new step in your new direction to have a new name that doesn't mean that if you go home and maybe your parents, because your mother you know, or your father named you that name, and that you go home now and you say, I'm Fatima now. And they say, no, 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 your name is so-and-so. No, I'm Fatima. No. If your parents gave you that name and they want to continue calling you that name, that's absolutely no problem. So if the sister wants to change her name, she can. If she wants to keep it, if it doesn't have any kind of uh, derogatory naming name because there were sometimes you know some Sahaba that they had bad names or you know names one of them was Harb War <laughs> <laughs> so the Prophet Alaihissalam changed their name to you know other names like you know, I think it was one case his name was Harb or difficult and the Prophet said no Anta Sahel you are easy the meaning of your name is easy not difficult and Harb War it's easy so he named him Sahel. So that's the kind of, you know, if your name has that meaning, which is maybe not so good, then maybe it's a good idea to change it. However, it is not something which is ilzam. You don't have to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, knows best. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Unfortunately, okay, ask one question and then we continue. I've got a question from a brother. Uh, he says, uh, I'm, I've converted recently to Islam and uh, my, si my parents are still... Uh, Christians and uh, they don't listen to me because uh, I don't have enough knowledge and I feel bad so what would I do? Wait. The brother has embraced Islam and his parents are Christians and his parents don't listen to him. Do they have to listen to you? Or do you have to listen to your parents? Okay. It is very important that when you call people to Islam, that you do it in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. The call to the path of your Lord with wisdom, with the Quran and Sunnah, with wisdom. Wa maw'idati al hasana and a fine admonition in a nice way if they want to argue with you or they want to debate with you then therefore jadilhum debate with them billati hiya ahsan debate with them in a way that is best when you talk to them they may not want to listen but for sure you need to make sure 100% that your actions speak louder than your words that you are a living example of what it is to be a Muslim. Not that you should be a Muslim and you need to do this and if you don't do this, you're going here and may Allah save you. Maybe that's not wise. But let them see you as a better son. Let them be proud of you. That we tried our best to bring up our son and now look what he has done. He's a Muslim now. He's become a better person. So make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you become a good example to your parents. Be kind and show them goodness. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the hearts to the true and sincere worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alam. Jazakallah khairan and may Allah bless you. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, just a few announce announcements. Uh, lost keys. Anybody who's lost their keys, please proceed to the security. Uh, the girls at the gate have 
lost keys. Who uh, were not here before, he is an expert in comparative religion. Um, very is a very he's a he's a common face in at Peace TV, um, and um, please do ask a lot of questions in regards to comparative religion after his session. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salam ala man la nabiyya ba'da wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibikum Allah wallahu ghafur r-rahim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I greet all of you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mashallah, you're all ready for the next day? Yes? You know, the best tip to reserve your chair is take your chair back. You don't have to worry about. Your brothers and sisters, the subject that I would like to share with you is on the title, If You Know Him, You Will Love Him. And that is none other than our Habib, our beloved Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we study the glorious Quran, we find the best of creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are the humans. Allah Almighty says in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, Ayah number 70, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا Bani Adam," And we have chosen the children of Adam and have preferred them over the rest. So the best of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the humans. And the best among the humans are those men who are called as prophets and messengers. And according to the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were no less than 124,000 prophets and messengers sent to this world. And the best among all these prophets and messengers